So uh, our high outliers, so our high outliers would be anything greater than or equal to quartile 3 plus 1.5 IQR. So quartile 3 was 13 plus 1.5 times 5.5. Alright, so if we, if I grab a calculator here, you can kind of do this really quick. I don't use calculators very much, I usually use computer programs, but this kind of can use a calculator. Remember to do the multiplication first, so 1.5 times 5.5 gives us 8.25. If I add 13 to it, I get 21.25. So any values in the data set that are above 21.25 are going to be considered high outliers or unusually high values. Well, are there any? Yes, there is, right here, this one. So this one right here is going to be a high outlier. Right? So this tells me that the one data value that was above the outlier cutoff, 21.25, is now considered an unusual value. So $31, there was no values that were exactly $21.25, but I do know that $33.50 in the actual data is an outlier, right? Now what about low outliers? So with low outliers, we said the formula for is anything less than or equal to quartile 1, 7.5, minus 1.5 times 5.5. Again, 1.5 times 5.5 gives us 8.25. Subtract that from 7.5, and we get negative 0.75. No, it's okay. It, it, you can get negative cutoffs. Uh, that just tells you, was there any numbers that were lower than negative 0.75 in the data set? No. That means there was no low outliers. So there was no, there was no numbers in the data set that were below the low outlier cutoff. So there was no low outliers. In other words, $6.50 is, is not an outlier. It's not unusual for somebody to spend $6.50 in the store. So this data only really had one high outlier, the $33.50. By the way, that's also what would probably make this data very skewed right because of this one real high outlier here. Now, there is a graph that goes with this data, and it's called a box plot. It's a very famous graph. Box plots are very, very famous. And um, so I want to try to make a box plot here just so you can get the idea of how a box plot works. So a box plot is sort of a graph of the quartiles, and it also shows you outliers. So um, just a couple things. So we, we have the data goes from 6.5 to 33.5. So I'm just going to make a number line for that. So um, here's our, here's our uh, we'll kind of go this way. So I'll do, uh, maybe I'll do, here's $5, 5, 10, Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. How's that? Let's kind of make a, a number line here. Okay. Now, what the in a box plot, one of the first things they do is they draw a box in between quartile one and quartile three. Okay. So, uh, just want to check one thing really quick. So court, I was just checking if I did those okay, um, and uh, so it looks like we're okay. Um, now, um, quartile 1, again, was 7.5, so at 7.5, which is about right here, I'm going to draw this, sort of the, this, this part of the box. At 13, which is about right here, here's 13, I'm going to draw sort of the far right of the box. By the way, you can draw box plots vertically also. You can have this scale vertically and have the box going vertically. So the, the, again, the, um, the far left of the box is always quartile 1. The far right of the box is always quartile 3. Now they'll draw a line inside the box 
at the median, at the average, so 8.75. By the way, don't think that this has to be um, in the middle of the box. It's not. The, the, this is not based on distances like the mean is. It's based on just the numbers in order. So the quartile 2, the, the median, could really fall anywhere. Here's our quartile 2 or median could really fall anywhere uh, in the box. Okay, so when you see the box, think of this as um, the line in the box is the average, and the length of your box actually is IQR. So that's the length of your box is your spread, is your typical spread. Okay, now, the, the, this was often called a box and whisker plot. Um, because it actually has whiskers on the box. I think it came from like cat whiskers or something. It reminds people of that. So the whiskers um, go to, so this is what we call a box and whisker plot. Or just bo box plot for short. The whiskers um, go to the highest and lowest values in the data set that are not outliers. So they have to be numbers in the data that are not outliers. So if I was looking at this, um, I might say, okay, well, the lowest number in the data is 6.5, and that was not an outlier. So the bottom whisker, the bottom whisker has got to go to 6.5. So this is where, again, a whisker it always goes to a number that's not an outlier, though. Now, the, the highest number in the data set, the maximum of the data set was 33.5, but my whisker's not going to go to that because it was an outlier. It was designated as an outlier. So the computer will now pick a new outlier. I'm sorry, a new maximum. So what's the next biggest number in the data set? It has to be a number in the data set. So the high whisker is going to be the highest number in the data set that's not an outlier. So in our case, that's going to now default to 14.75. That's going to now be the, the top whisker. So my bottom whisker is going to go to 6.5. kind of a very small whisker there. And then the top whisker is going to go to 14.75, so just a hair under 15 there. So these little lines sticking off the end of the box are called the whiskers, and those, go, those are the highest and lowest numbers in the data set that are not outliers. Now, what about the outlier? The box plot actually shows you outliers. Each computer program uses a different symbol, though. Some computer programs use little circles, some computer programs use little triangles, some computer programs use uh, little stars, it just depends on the computer program. Um, so 33.5 is a high outlier, so what the computer will do is they'll draw like a little triangle or a little star here at 33.5. So if you see a little star or a little circle or a little triangle, um, sometimes you'll see like a little triangle or a circle or something. That just means that's an outlier. And what you can do when you get you make a box plot in the computer, um, you just hold your court cursor on those little stars with the little circles, and it'll tell you what the, all the outliers. So you could have like 20 outliers, and just hold your cursor on each one, and the computer will tell you what each of those outliers were. So it's very useful. I like box plots a lot because they actually give you the outliers which is very nice. Now, um, people always ask me, uh, should I use the box plot to find the outliers for normal data? Well, it's tricky. It is tricky. I, I've seen people that do that, and sometimes it works out okay. Sometimes it agrees. But remember that really in a calculation involving normal data, we're usually using the mean and standard deviation. So that's why I was showing you last time how to calculate the outliers from the mean and standard deviation. Uh, this, this calculation that the box plot is using is using the quartiles. So it's not really using the mean and standard deviation. So I like to think of box plots as going with non-normal data. So I use box plots for non-normal data. 
so our skewed data. Now, could I figure out the shape from this graph? Well, that, that can be really tricky. Um, a lot of times I much prefer looking at a dot plot or a histogram to, defer, to determine shape, but you can probably get a good idea that this is skewed right. If you think about it, the median, the median is the average, right? That's the average. And this line right here is the average. So think of that's where the center would be. That's where like the highest bar would be. And if I go to the left of that highest of the, of the um, center, see how it's a very small left tail. But if I go from the center all the way to the high outlier here, that's a very long right tail. So we're pretty sure that this is going to be a skewed right data set. Because the right tail, the distance from the center, is a lot farther to the right than it is to the left. Okay, so you can sort of get an idea of shape from um, box plots, though I do prefer looking at a, a histogram uh, to, get, uh, to get shape. Okay, so this is called a box plot or a box and whisker plot. And it's a great graph to make, kind of shows you visually your whole data um, in terms of spread. IQR is the length of your box. The line inside is your average, and it also shows you all the outliers. So it's a very useful graph. Okay, so let's uh, recap. So for non-normal or skewed data, we want to use the median as our average. IQR is our spread. Typical values are going to be between quartile 1 and quartile 3. And to find outliers, just have the computer make a box plot. You actually don't have to calculate these yourself. The computer does it automatically. Just have the computer make a box plot and then just look for these little stars or these little triangles or little circles. Sometimes you'll see little triangles or, or little circles like that. You know, that, that means uh, these are all symbols for outliers. Okay? All right, well, I'm hopefully that was helpful for you. And we'll, like I say, we'll have some more videos on using the computers to calculate all of this, but I hope this was helpful for you. So, again, this is Matt Show and Intro Stats, and I will see you next time.